people create homelessness by not helping. Now, should you help every single person who puts their hand out? No. But most people who are homeless that come from a different realm of homelessness, that they're sort of shocked into what's happened to them, that they've lost life from a losing a love interest or a person that's important like a father figure or something like that, that it impacted their ability to function for a little while, which is natural through the grieving process. But openly, it's because those people want to serve others. They want to serve other people in order to get their life back on track. They don't feel comfortable taking free food a lot of times, although sometimes we have to, to eat. But openly what they need more is water, bottled water, glass, glasses of tea are amazingly good uh, opportunities. Milk is not always great because those people who are homeless don't have a refrigerator. But openly it's still a good offering for the moment that they're in those programs picking up some food. It's always great in the Japanese culture. We always offer people something to eat and drink in the Japanese culture. It's a standard protocol of hospitality. Now, I could talk to you a little bit about my experiences at Kroger. I've had some wonderful experiences with some lovely people who work at Kroger, and I've had some horrid experiences with some people who operate at Kroger, but openly they've not remembered they're working for a national organization, and that in their moments when they're in a uniform with a name tag on and outside of their job, if they're getting off duty, if they're on break, they still represent the national organization. And if they lost their job for something idiotic they did, it's not on the national organization, it's on them. And it's certainly not on any person who brought their poor behavior to the attention of the corporate HR director. You see, in life, we either piss people off to the point that they call on you, or we love on people enough to say, I just want you to know your employee did a fabulous job today. And I make those calls when people impress me. I think employees deserve it. The ones who are honest, true, and helpful, and try and make sure that the people and idiots above them don't make mistakes by talking about what they do and don't have in the bank or anything like that, literally worth are worth a call. I've even had a manager say to me, you know, I normally get calls when people are pissed off. This was a nice surprise. Thank you for calling. And that's what we need to do for people. We need to raise them up in front of their bosses when we can. If it's really good praise, if it's really something that was genuine and sincere and a loving thing to do for someone, now, we could talk about loving people in our workplace, but we have to be careful about using the word love because people get so with their nose bent out of shape. But openly, we do love our colleagues sometimes enough because we're trying to help them make refer recommendations to our business, and there, then in return, we're literally giving them our referral network. I really laugh at the people who'll say, gosh, I don't know anybody I can you can talk to because that is an absolute lie. It's a cop-out. It's literally saying, I don't like you, know you, or trust you well enough to give you that referral. And I sometimes understand that point of view because I felt that way on certain things in the past. But I also realize that people make different impressions on other people. And it's moments in time that make all the difference for a person's life. When a person intentionally fails someone, intentionally literally goes after a person's life in a way that is to harm them somehow in a litigious fashion, it is a monstrous thing to do. Now, have I reported people who violated my rights? Absolutely. Have I talked to their supervisors? Yes, I have. Why? Because that person failed to listen when I was trying to tell them what happened myself. So if they're not going to hear it from me, if they're not going to take the customer service attitude of, I really need to listen to this because this is good feedback that I can grow from regardless of what it sounds like and feels like to me. It's really putting our emotions on hold to take a moment and put the pause button on to literally go, I'm going to take in all the information, I'm going to write it down carefully, I'm going to set it aside, and then I'm going to look at it later when I'm less emotional to decide whether or not what I've heard is really something I should really consider making a modification in my own behavior, representing my company in this moment of time. Now that takes a real mature person to do. Did I professionally represent my firm well? Did I professionally represent my own family well? Did I put myself at a little risk of getting fired for something I did on a customer's life? That's something we sometimes have to think about. Now, there are certainly people who are monsters that want to make life so hard for people that they don't agree with on a religious or spiritual level, but it's not their little right. That is not a law of the Lord. The Lord doesn't say we're going to go create hate in the world. He will say something like, we hate this type of behavior, but he literally doesn't say, go out and persecute someone for this behavior. There's the difference, I think, between the law of the Lord. At the same time, most people don't really pray about stuff long enough. They pray and then they make a decision. Some things need literally to be prayed about a lot. 
some things need to be turned about fair play on ourselves to say, if this was literally my situation in life, do would I want someone else manhandling my situation? And usually at that point, we hear the law of the Lord, which is absolutely not. That this situation is between this person and the God he or she believes in. Now, that's kind of a strong words for someone who's sort of a pastor in some people's lives. I try to show people what I'm capable of, not at all. I try to tell people, are they loving on people in their work? And that's something I sort of push on. I literally don't feel loved by retail store people very often. Literally, it's because they're working at the lowest level of income, typically, or they have another source of income in their life that makes them feel a little less stressed. But every single person has to produce a life worth living in terms of who their social networks are and what they're doing to celebrate other people's lives and serve them wholeheartedly in their souls and a retirement worth having, which means I'm setting enough money away in the bank. I'm not spending it. I'm not foolishly putting it out there in charity situations that I really don't have the means to, to afford to do. And I'm really going to look at this life. Now, am I saying that God doesn't honor those little donations? No. God honors every donation we give to the poor, I'm pretty sure. But we just have to be realistic in what we can give. We can't literally go, some pastor convinced me to give all this money away. Only if you got millions of dollars does that make sense. You certainly can afford to give away tens of thousands of dollars. And God has blessed you for that point. But in our lives, we have to make a life worth living and a retirement totally worth having because we will be left alone if our partner in life dies, transitions to heaven, or leaves us for a better model. Sorry, that is the truth of what can happen in life. Because relationships and soul care and soul keeping is literally the most important thing we do in life. I try to soul keep someone a lot. It doesn't go very well sometimes. I've tried to get people to see what poor soul keeping jobs they're doing. That goes over very poorly. But somebody has to rebuke these people sometimes. Rebuke is how we learn in life. Apologizing is how we show our care and our humility in life. Making things right is how we show the love of the Lord. Making sure we don't harm someone in someone's life is how we truly represent Jesus in the world. Now this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications LLC talking about magic and mayhem and asking you to prove your faith, whatever it might be whether it's in Jesus, whether it's in Muhammad, whether it's in any other deity that is basically of love and light, meaning a positive force in the world that helps people to plan their lives and do the right things in terms of a person, their paperwork, and their property. When we dishonor any of those things, we are not in the loving light of the Lord God in heaven, whatever your name for him or her is, literally. Make it a great day, people. Make people's lives matter to you. Take every moment as an opportunity to show the Lord's love to others by loving them to where they want to go in life, not where you openly think they should go in life. Therein lies the difference. The soul makes the path. Not an outsider has a right to do this. The Lord puts a soul in every human being to go on a path. Some paths are tough and hard, but often they become harder because people monkey up their opportunities to help. Again, this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications LLC saying, make love to people's souls in terms of helping them to rise to a better place in life, making sure they have enough income to live out their days in safety and security and enough retirement socked away to make sure that when they're old and gray and alone, they will not be hungry and homeless. Isn't that the point of the world today?